Today I'm going to explain why you overthink, why it's not your fault, and how you can tell the negative voice in your head to shut the f*** up. But to do that, I need to tell you about a family. Not this one, or this one, or this one, or even this one, but this one. This is the family of voices that live inside of your head. And my theory is that every time that you're overthinking, it's because these family members are arguing. So let's meet them. So I've been given the title of critical parent, which I think is a bit rude to be honest. I'm only critical because my family are incompetent bastards. And if I didn't say anything, they'd run their lives like stupid, slimy little vermin. I never get a break, you see, I, I supply them with everything. Uh, I'm, I'm the head of the family, and for some reason they don't appreciate me. I just, you know, they just don't, they don't deserve my love and respect. So I've been given the title of nurturing parent, which I'm so grateful and joyful to receive. All I ever ask is to supply love and compassion to all of my family. Despite our differences, and despite my husband's critical personality, I just see the value in all individuals, and I want everyone to reach their potential through love, compassion, Enjoy. Uh, I'm, I'm the child of the family. I'm, I'm the youngest one. And um, I, I don't like it when mommy and daddy argue all the time. It scares me. Daddy's scary when, he, when he's angry. And when he's, he's angry at me. And then he's doing the shouting. And mommy does the crying. And it's not good. But I just want to be a child. I just want to have fun. I just want to enjoy myself. So yeah, I'm sort of the, uh, the adult of the family. Um, I've been told I'm the, the balanced one. If I'm honest, I, th I think the rest of them are pretty mental. They're just cra like crazy, all over the place, honestly. So um, I tend to just uh, try and diffuse the conflicts and try and bring some peace into the house. Now, I've based this family on a theory known as transactional analysis, which suggests that human beings play a variety of roles in their life. Specifically, they have a series of parent, child and adult ego states that they live within in their lives. We often change into different ego states depending on the context of a situation, but when we overthink, it's when we're trying to play two different roles at the same time. Because overthinking often occurs when we don't know what the best way to act in a certain scenario is, and we have different voices in our head telling us two conflicting things. To show you how this works, I wanted to find an example. So I googled, what's the most common thing that people overthink about? And the answer was ruminating about the past or worrying about the future. This was me last night, and I was overthinking. In fact, I was ruminating about the past. It was the end of another day, and I was considering whether I'd used the last 24 hours in the most productive way I could. In fact, whether I had used the last 24 hours and done enough, whatever that means. I'm someone who's quite driven and goal-oriented. So when it comes to the end of the day, and I don't feel like I performed as good as I could, well, then I start overthinking and it feels like my internal family are having this kind of argument. You know, Joel, it really feels as if what you're doing these days is just not living up to who you could be. You're just a stupid little boy, lazy, going for the pleasure and the instant gratification and letting yourself run wild. You're better than this. You know, it's just stupid. Making mistakes all the time. You're letting yourself down. You're letting me down. You're letting everyone down. You're letting the world down. And it's all your fault. And now I'm stressed because daddy's angry. All I wanted to do was have fun and relax. And I have to live up to his stupid, big expectations. I'm only young, I'm only like six years old, man. And he's always putting this pressure on me. He's evil, he's a monster, he's scary. This is the most common occurrence that leads you to overthink. Your critical parent is saying one thing to you and your child is scared and just wants to be a child. If you're overthinking about something that went wrong or that you're ashamed of or embarrassed about from the past, the child just wants to let go and be free. But your critical parent will not let you let go. It keeps bringing it up and bringing back that shame and that embarrassment. In the same way, when you're thinking or worrying about something in the future, your child is nervous of the unknown and the unpredictability of what may come. But your critical parent makes you feel stupid for even worrying about that thing, telling you that you need to man up and just get on with it. Neither of these thought patterns are healthy, but neither of these thought patterns are your fault. You see, often the parent that speaks loudest in your mind, whether that be the critical parent or the nurturing parent, depends very, very heavily on the way you were brought up in your own childhood. So what's the underlying solution? How do we finally stop overthinking? Well, back to me last night. 
I've learned that whenever I start overthinking, ruminating about the past, thinking that I haven't done enough that day, I take a moment and I pause. And in that moment, I recognize that the voice that's telling me that is my critical parent. And that self-awareness is just the thing that makes the critical parent lose its power. Then I'll address my inner child and notice that they feel ashamed for not living up to the expectations of the critical parent. I'll then bring in the nurturing parent to show a level of compassion for myself and to tell myself that making mistakes does not take away from my value as an individual. And in doing that, I have shifted into the adult ego state, the balanced, calm, rational perspective. And I can tell myself through the lens of the adult state that even though I haven't been perfect today, I still did some good stuff. And for the most part, I enjoyed myself. And for that reason, I think I have to be grateful for the day that I've just had and wake up tomorrow with a real positive outlook on the future. And it's as simple as that. You're not going to stop overthinking overnight, but you have to learn this process. First, you need to notice the conflict between the inner family inside of you. What is the critical parent saying and how are their expectations not being met? How is the inner child? How are they feeling and what are they ashamed of? And how can you embody the values of the adult ego state and create a rational, reasonable response to what has happened to diffuse that argument? They are the principles. And as weird as it might sound, I hope that understanding your mind in this way helps you to slow down those thought patterns, slow down the constant overthinking until eventually you might be able to gain some more peace of mind. And now I've been asked to do the outro for the f***ing video like I'm some workhorse, some donkey. You do know I'm better than that. Not like these stupid little people making YouTube videos. It's ridiculous. Anyway, um, I've been asked that you watch this one, this next video here. I mean, it, it probably sh to be honest. This guy doesn't know anything about anything. Just some stupid little boy, but but with being that being said, you know, you may as well watch it, find out, and you can laugh at him, laugh at his stupidness.